Hello everyone! In this video, planet Earth will have different axial tilts, just like the other planets in the solar system. I will sequentially set Earth's axial tilt to match that of Mercury, Venus, Mars and so on. And you'll see how Earth's appearance and climate will change as a result. All of this will be demonstrated using the Universe Sandbox Simulator. Let's get started! And first of all, let's take a look at the native axial tilt of our planet Earth. It is 23.4 degrees. And thanks to this tilt, Earth experiences the changing of seasons, that is, the alternation of times of the year. That's summer, winter, autumn and spring, just as we know them. Well, now let's start the experiments. Let's start with the first planet from the Sun, Mercury. Mercury's axial tilt is 0.01 .01 and a bit more degrees. So I'll set this particular value for our planet, 0.0118 degrees. So basically, what this means is that Mercury has a zero axial tilt and the Earth has simply lost its axial tilt. And now, as I understand it, there simply won't be any change of seasons on Earth. Now I'll fast forward time, let the climate settle and then you'll see the final result. Time has passed and the climate has stabilized. Now, let me hide the atmosphere and clouds and let's take a closer look at the Earth's surface. So. What do we see? We see the following picture. In North America, thick snow and ice reach all the way to the Great Lakes. And here this snow is permanent. In other words, there are no more seasons on Earth. In Europe, we see the following picture. The United Kingdom is almost completely frozen and Europe is covered in snow, which doesn't go away. Well, the regions a bit further south, of course, still have more or less tolerable conditions. As we can see, everything is fine at the equator. There was hardly any impact here, of course, but if we look at the southern hemisphere, we see this kind of picture in Antarctica. Here, of course, Antarctica is covered in ice like this, all year round. And the vast ice from Antarctica even reaches the southern regions of South America. If we look even further at the northern hemisphere, at the North Pole and its surroundings, we see that there is much more ice here than there was before. So that's what the Earth looks like. If you don't believe me, I'll speed up time drastically right in front of you now. Let a huge amount of time pass. Now I'm speeding up time to 3, 2 months per second. And do you see that the situation on Earth stays the same? The ice is always in the same place and the snow doesn't go anywhere or disappear. If we look at the temperature, basically everything is more or less the same, but the minimum temperature has dropped and is now minus 129 degrees Celsius. As for the probability of life, it currently remains at 90% on Earth. I've restarted the simulation and now we'll conduct an experiment with Venus. Venus has an axial tilt of 177 degrees. Just imagine such an axial tilt. Because of this, Venus rotates in the opposite direction compared to the other planets in the solar system. So I'm setting this value for Earth, 177 degrees. Oh wow. Take a moment to look at what our planet Earth actually looks like now. Earth has truly flipped completely, turning upside down so to speak if we put it simply. So what exactly does this mean for us? Now because of this the sun will rise at sunset and set in the east on Earth. That's the kind of unusual feature Earth will have now. Time has passed and the climate has stabilized. Now let's see what the final result is on our planet. Let me focus in. Yes, here the Earth is obviously flipped over. That's the main thing that catches our eye. But let's take a look at the climate here. So we see Antarctica. And here, something similar is happening as with Mercury's axial tilt. The ice and snow are creeping a bit onto South America, onto the southern part of South America, and in the Northern Hemisphere, if you can even still call it the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, I don't even know what to call it anymore. But we'll see that here too, something similar is happening. The snow has reached the Great Lakes in North America. And in Europe, the situation is also similar, just like with Mercury's axial tilt. At the equator, I think there won't be any major changes either, except that now the sun will rise and set in a different place. In terms of temperature, I see that the situation here is already a little different. The maximum temperature has actually become lower than it was with Mercury's axial tilt. And the minimum temperature hasn't dropped as much either, minus 104 degrees Celsius. As a result, the probability of life is now almost 91%. But if you look at the axial tilt itself, in terms of whether there would be seasonal changes in this case, as we can see, there aren't any. Essentially, for some reason, the situation is very similar to what we saw with Mercury, with Mercury's axial tilt. And honestly, that surprised me a little, but it is what it is. You saw for yourselves that the situation is very similar. The simulation has been restarted again. And now I'll conduct an experiment with Mars's axial tilt. Mars has an axial tilt of 25.2 degrees. Here, it's slightly greater than Earth's, so there probably won't be any significant changes. 
but let's take a look anyway. I'm setting Earth's axial tilt to match that of Mars, which is 25.2 degrees. As you can see, Earth's tilt has changed a little and the climate has stabilized. Now let's see what the final result is. I'm hiding the atmosphere in clouds and focusing on the surface. But right now, of course, it's winter here in North America. Let me also speed up time so you can see that with this axial tilt, Earth will now have changing seasons. Here, I'm speeding up time. And you can see the ice and snow receding in North America, then coming back again and receding once more. So the process of seasonal changes is happening. Here, basically, it's essentially the same as with Earth's axial tilt, but because Mars's tilt is actually a bit greater, the snow and ice can reach a bit further south than they do on Earth. However, when it's summer on Earth, the snow and ice retreat even farther than they do with Earth's normal axial tilt. Well, basically, I think you got the idea. If you look at the temperature, the figures here, roughly speaking, haven't changed at all. Although the maximum temperature is 27 degrees. But here, the simulator is displaying something incorrectly. Well, the maximum temperature on Earth is higher anyway. And in this case, the probability of life is already higher than with the axial tilt of Mercury or Venus. And is, in fact, 91.4%. And next up, we have an experiment with Jupiter's axial tilt. Jupiter's tilt is 3.12 degrees. I'm setting this value for Earth, 3.12 degrees. So, it turns out that this axial tilt is also very close to zero, so there won't be any significant seasonal changes on Earth. Time has passed, the climate seems to have stabilized, and right now in the simulator, two and a half months pass per second. Let's take a closer look. So regarding what I mentioned to you earlier, there will just be a slight volatility here due to the change of seasons, specifically in these regions where, roughly speaking, snow and vegetation meet. Well, we can see that there's a little bit of movement there. Even I find it hard to notice. But if you look closely, it really does seem like something is happening there. Let's also take a look at how things are in Europe. Well, as I observe, there are also some minor movements of snow and ice, but nothing too significant. And what's happening in the Southern Hemisphere? Well, here, where Antarctica meets South America, we can see this kind of picture. Overall, the situation is also very similar to what we saw with Mercury and even with Venus. The situation at the equator, of course, is quite normal. Everything is fairly stable there. In terms of temperature, we can see here that the minimum temperature drops as low as minus 148 degrees it's really dropped significantly. The other indicators seem to be unchanged. The chance of life in this case is exactly 90%. Now I'll conduct an experiment with Saturn's axial tilt. Saturn's axial tilt is 26.7 degrees. But here, the axial tilt is a bit greater than that of Mars, so it's unlikely there will be any significant changes on Earth either. But still, it's worth checking. So let's set Earth's axial tilt to that of Saturn, 26.7 degrees. We can see that only Earth's axial tilt has changed. And now Earth looks like this. And basically guys, time has passed and this moment is still ongoing. As you can see here we have a clear change of seasons. You can distinctly see how the seasons change. And look, even some bodies of water are reaching into Africa. Take another look. Pay close attention to where the Sahara Desert is. And here you can see it's as if something is happening. When it's winter, it's right in this area. So basically now you can see winter landscapes much further south than you would with the Earth's axis at its normal tilt. And if you look at North America, you can see that the snow and ice reach down to this level. And as usual, let's also take a look at the south of South America. Here we can see that snow and ice cover the southern part of this continent to about this level. If we look at the region near Australia, everything is normal in Australia itself. But on New Zealand's South Island, there is a significant increase in snow in the mountains. With this particular tilt of the Earth's axis, the probability of life is as high as 91.5%. Well, it's time for the next experiment. The next planet in line is Uranus. I think this will be the most interesting experiment because, as we know, Uranus is a planet that actually lies on its side. It lies on its side because its axial tilt is an astonishing 97.9 degrees. Just imagine. So, I set this value for the Earth, 97.9 degrees. Whoa, look at that. See how the Earth just completely flipped over. And as you can clearly see, its northern hemisphere, that is, the North Pole, is now entirely turned toward the Sun. And it's almost as if it's ended up right on the equator. And Antarctica right now is completely turned away from the Sun. Time has fast forwarded, and take a look at what Earth looks like. All these islands along the equator have frozen over, and even Africa is completely covered in ice. That's incredible. And if you look over here, Australia seems to look okay. 
But anyway, I'm showing you this visual of the planet at this moment. Now I'll focus on the Earth's surface, and let's take a closer look at what we've got here. As we can see here, there's actually a bit of ice present in the Northern Hemisphere. Let me speed up time for you. Two and a half months will pass by every single second. We can clearly see that because this part of the planet, the Northern Hemisphere, was facing the star for quite a long period of time. A lot of regions and areas on the planet have been flooded. Seriously and extensively flooded, especially the vast region of Eurasia. But the situation here really isn't all that dire. You see, the ice actually hasn't completely melted yet, and that's because the Earth is still orbiting the Sun, so sunlight only lingers here for about half of the year, and for the other half, it's dark. In this region, the cycle of light and darkness continues as it always has. You'll see for yourself in a moment. I'll show you a clear example. Take a look at how it works. Here we have light, and here we don't. So for half the year there's solar energy, and for the other half, there isn't. That's why the ice can't completely melt. When night falls here, on this hemisphere, where Antarctica is, it's daytime. And vice versa. See? I think you get what I'm talking about. Now I'll turn on the flashlight so we can see the whole planet. And as we can see, Antarctica only melts halfway at a time, while the rest of this area remains covered in ice all the time. And actually, oh, at one point even Australia gets covered with snow. That's pretty intense, of course. And I've already told you about these islands. Take a look at India, at China, at these regions of the planet. Here they freeze completely and utterly when it's winter here. And Africa, oh how incredibly cold it has become now, truly. But on the other hand, the situation in Europe has become more like what Africa used to be. Here, as we can see, the surface stays green all year round. In North America, this is the situation. But here, as you can see, the ice covers this desert here. And the ice even reaches these southern regions of the United States. And Greenland, as we can see, has completely melted here. Only in winter does a little bit of ice appear here. I haven't shown you South America yet. The situation here is very bleak. Only the southern part of the continent, as we can see, is not covered by snow. In terms of temperature, the average temperature here has even dropped. Looking here, the minimum temperature has actually increased, while the maximum temperature varies and at times almost reaches 40 degrees. Well, look at this. With this axial tilt, the probability of life on Earth even the highest among all our experiments today, is 94%. And so this is how Earth looks with such an axial tilt. Incredible. And our next experiment will be with Neptune's axial tilt. Neptune's axial tilt is measured at 27.8 degrees. For this demonstration, I'm setting the same value for Earth, specifically 27.8 degrees. And what happens with this axial tilt? Earth will basically still have the familiar change of seasons. Here, compared to Earth's original axial tilt, the tilt has only increased by 4 degrees. Time has passed, the climate has settled, and it's quite stable, very similar to what we're used to in everyday life. The temperature basically is the same as it was before. But again, for some reason, the maximum temperature is very low. It's strange. Why does the simulator display it this way? Maybe there's something I'm not understanding here. Write about it in the comments. And since the tilt of the axis is only 4 degrees greater than the usual tilt of Earth's axis, the only difference will be that, if we take the northern hemisphere as an example, when it's winter, winter will reach further into the southern regions, and when it's summer, on the contrary, summer will extend further into the northern regions. So that's basically how it is. And in the end, with this axis tilt, the probability of life on Earth is 91.5%. And let's not overlook the dwarf planet Pluto. We'll run an experiment with its axis tilt as well. Pluto's axis tilt is 123 degrees. I'm setting this value for Earth. I think something interesting might happen. Applying it. Oh wow! Where did Earth go? Just like with Venus, it flipped over. So as I understand it, values over 100 degrees caused the planet to simply flip over. Look at how it looks now. That's incredible. So guys, some time has passed. The average temperature on Earth has actually dropped. The maximum temperature has also dropped significantly. Here you can see the numbers. And the minimum temperature has actually increased a little. On the contrary. Does that mean the temperature has evened out across the planet? Here you see the northern hemisphere. This is the situation. A lot of ice has melted here. And as a result, many regions on the planet have been flooded again. And if you look at the southern hemisphere, on the contrary, this is the situation we have in Antarctica. Again, this region here is melting, but this part is not. If you look at South America, this is what it looks like here. It seems like the ice doesn't really reach here much. And if you look at the south of Africa, as you can see, this southern part gets covered with snow in winter. Well, overall, it's quite an unusual planet. The equator in general is doing fine. At least these islands here are. 
In Australia the situation seems unchanged, but it looks like some bodies of water have appeared here. Here we can see snow appearing in the mountainous areas of this continent. The situation is about the same in New Zealand. Just admit it guys, as soon as you flip the planet completely upside down, it immediately feels like we have a different planet in front of our screens, not Earth. So that's the experiment we ended up with. We had Earth rotating in the opposite direction, like Venus, and lying on its side, like Uranus. Well, I hope you found it interesting. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a like and leave a comment about this experiment. And feel free to correct me if I made any mistakes. Thank you very much for watching and see you again in the universe.